Ms. Jensen. Thank you, Your Honor. May it please the court. Defense. Good morning. Welcome back. Way back in jury selection, and I know that seems probably forever ago, <clears throat> but when we talked to you all in small groups, I explained, or <clears throat> excuse me, at least I tried to explain what aggravating factors were. And just to help refresh, refresh your memory for this portion of the trial, aggravating factors are circumstances that increase the gravity of a murder. They are factors that allow the state to seek and argue for the death penalty, and they are limited by Florida statute. To help try and explain what aggravating factors were in jury selection, I gave you situations that were not involved in Mr. Hartung's case. I gave you the example that if, a, uh, if the victim of a murder is a child under the age of 12, that can be an aggravating factor. I also gave you the situation if the victim of the murder was a police officer engaged in their official duties, that can be an aggravating factor. So let's talk about the aggravating factors in this defendant's case. And let me back up a minute. You are not going to hear a whole lot of evidence from the state during this portion of the trial. And that's because all of the evidence that you heard in part one applies to part two. So everything you heard, anything and everything, can be used and should be used in this part of the trial. So having said that, the first statutory <coughs> aggravating factor in this defendant's case is that the defendant was convicted of another capital felony. And really what that is, is just a confusing way of saying that there are three victims in this case. There are multiple victims here, and they were killed in the same criminal episode. So the aggravator, the aggravating factor, is that there are multiple people who were murdered. You have already heard that evidence in part one, and as a matter of fact, you have already found this defendant guilty of the first degree murder of each of those victims, and therefore, that aggravating factor has already been proven beyond a reasonable doubt. The second statutory aggravating factor in this defendant's case is that the murders were committed for financial gain. And the word that you're going to see in your jury instructions is pecuniary, and that just means money. And again, you have already heard evidence in part one of this trial of the financial motive and the financial gain of this defendant. The state submits to you that that aggravating factor has also already been proven to you beyond a reasonable doubt. The third statutory aggravating factor in this defendant's case is that the murders were committed in a cold, calculated, and premeditated manner. Cold means the murder was the product of calm and cool reflection. Calculated means having a careful plan or prearranged design to commit murder. And premeditated, you already know what that is. We talked about it in jury selection, and it was also in your jury instructions in part one of this trial. You found this defendant guilty of first degree premeditated murder. But for this aggravating factor to apply in phase two, there must be a heightened level of premeditation. And you remember we talked about the fact that premeditation can be formed in a moment before the murders are committed. The law does not fix the exact period of time that must pass for premeditation. But in this part of the trial, there must be a heightened level of premeditation, okay? And again, you heard evidence in the first part of the trial that these murders were planned for years. And not only that, but you also heard that this defendant executed those murders methodically, carefully, and deliberately. State submits to you that that aggravating factor has also been proven beyond a reasonable doubt based on the evidence in part one of this trial. So those are the three aggravating factors. Multiple murders of victims for financial gain in a cold, calculated, and premeditated manner. Now what you are going to hear in this part of the trial that you did not hear in the first part of the trial is testimony about the victims. That testimony is called victim impact. And you can hear it in this part of the trial where you could not hear it in the first part of the trial. Now having said that, you are not to consider it as aggravating evidence. It is presented to you to show the uniqueness of each victim in this case and the loss 
that has been caused by each of the three of their deaths. Ladies and gentlemen, I know this has been a long haul, but we all certainly appreciate your time and your attention in this portion of the trial. Thank you.